Hi, this is Dr. Jim Parker in Lumberton, North Carolina. I'm a radiologist and I'm going to be going over the CT scan of a patient which presumably has SMA syndrome. On the left are sagittal images through the abdomen obtained with a CT scan following administration of oral contrast and intravenous contrast. This is the abdominal aorta and here is the takeoff of the celiac artery and here is the takeoff of the superior mesenteric artery or the SMA. And on the axial image we can see that the distance between the SMA and the aorta is very small. I've actually measured it and it measures in this patient between about three and four millimeters in length here. Uh, that's, that's fairly small. Um, Normally, and even in young women who are fairly thin, we usually see at least uh, five, six, seven millimeters is, is more of the lower limits of normal for that. Um, you can see that the SMA here back on the sagittal image does not uh, widen its distance from the aorta as it traverses inferiorly. Uh, it maintains this narrow distance uh, all the way down you can see here this little thin gray line here that is the third portion of the duodenum that's being sandwiched between the aorta and the SMA. I'll show you a patient with a more normal appearance for comparison. Uh, what else can we see on the CT? Here is the left renal vein coming across to enter the inferior vena cava and you can see that there's also a little bit of extrinsic narrowing of that left renal vein as it passes between the aorta and the SMA. All right, we'll move on to the next example here. This is the CT scan of a 17-year-old woman without SMA syndrome, but we are looking at her abdominal aorta here and the SMA. And I'm, as I'm scrolling through these sagittal images, you can see that the SMA takes off at a, a much larger angle than in patients with the SMA syndrome. And on the axial image, you can see there's a much greater distance between the abdominal aorta and the SMA. We can measure that distance. And in this patient, that distance is approximately nine millimeters or so. So that's a much more normal distance between the abdominal aorta and the SMA at the level of the third portion of the duodenum. This here is the third portion of the duodenum. So it has plenty of room as it crosses between the SMA and the abdominal aorta in this patient. Okay, we are looking at the upper GI series on the patient with the SMA syndrome and we can see barium in the stomach and barium in the first portion of the duodenum and the second portion of the duodenum here. And uh, we're going to watch a little bit of the barium come across. Obviously, barium can make it uh, across the midline or else we wouldn't see barium over here in the small bowel on the patient's left. And there goes a little bit across there and then it narrows about near the midline. It looks like it thins out, as you'd expect from having looked at that CT. But what we're going to what we're going to see here is a a pattern that's persistent over the entire time I evaluated this patient is this right here, uh, just a to and a fro motion of the barium sulfate suspension, just going back and forth uh, in the second portion of the duodenum, immediately proximal to the SMA where it crosses the aorta. So. Right around here where I'm pointing with the arrow is where the SMA uh, lies on top of the aorta. And this liquid has to get across here. Now keep in mind that uh, we don't just drink liquids. We eat spaghetti and meatballs and all kinds of uh, solid and semi-solid food. And this test here only is looking at liquid. So you can imagine that uh, higher viscosity material and solids would have a greater time in passing through that four millimeter thick aperture which basically her duodenum has to pass between but uh, you can you can definitely see from the images I've saved here that there is uh, 
difficulty in even the liquid crossing over the midline. Uh, this finding, I would say, would probably not be picked up on most standard upper GI series. Uh, those are mainly looking for ulcers and polyps and mucosal abnormalities that uh, are more common. Uh, so, not to put my colleagues down, but I, I just don't think that this uh, mild dilatation of the second portion of the duodenum would be picked up and this delay in transit which is fairly subtle of the liquid across the midline would be, would be picked up on the standard upper GI series. You need to be spe specifically looking for this and uh, I evaluated this patient in decubitus, supine, and upright positions and uh, she actually seemed to get more liquid across when she was in the supine position. I don't know why but that seemed to be better for her. When she was upright she seemed to have the most amount of difficulty in getting the liquid barium to cross the midline. You can see there's pooling of contrast in the second portion of the duodenum proximal to the SMA. I believe that is a sign of SMA syndrome, this pooling of contrast just proximal to the superior mesenteric artery. This here is pooling in the stomach, uh, distal stomach, and this is pooling in the second portion of the duodenum. And there's some reflux. I hope this video will help raise awareness of SMA syndrome, help doctors learn to recognize its imaging findings, and help find a cure.